Um, Gail, uh, your, your reflections right now lead me to another question. We've talked about student preparation for community-based research. And those of us who've mentored and taught uh, students in, in, in those situations over the years um, also reflect on our responsibilities around university preparation. Is the university ready? And does it support community-based research in the ways it should? And you know, those of us who are working with students who are investing in community-based research uh, what do we do to make sure the university is a welcoming, appreciative home for students who want to, to make their career around community-based research? And I just wondered if you'd like to share your wisdom on, on those issues. Okay, so the question is, <laughs> are universities really ready for community-based research? And how can we support uh, support the development of universities to make them better, better able to uh, both support community-based researchers as well as train students in it. Um, yeah, boy, that's a big question. Um, and I have given a little bit of thought to that. Um, I think that, that I, I mean, obviously one of the things that needs to happen is, is for the academy itself, uh, you know, for people like you and I and those others in the room that, that do community-based research. I mean, obviously we need to publish about it. Uh, we need to, uh, you know, we need to establish it as, uh, uh, as a, a valid and rigorous type of, of research uh, methodology. And I know one of the things that we've been considering at Algoma is actually establishing a master's degree in community-based research. And that would certainly be one way of, of doing it. And, and I notice, you know, there are centers springing up across the country uh, in, in universities, which I think will, will certainly aid in that. Um, so, I mean, I think that's, that's one step, is, is recognizing that this type of methodology does require a certain set of skills and, a, you know, uh, just as any other uh, type of research methodology. Um, we need to, you know, we need to do all of the things that academics do. We need to sit on peer review committees, and and raise these issues because uh, for certainly for new academics, if they want to go through the promotional, uh, you know, ladder, they they have to uh, the type of research that they're doing has to be appreciated, and. I think that we need to perhaps start establishing for ourselves if, if we're really going to do that, then what would be the indicators? Because um, being published in a peer-reviewed journal, as, as this gentleman <laughs> suggested, um, you know, being published in a peer-reviewed journal may not be the kind of test that we should have for community-based researchers. You know, maybe that's not as appropriate as as uh, curating a museum exhibit, or as uh, you know, doing a workshop, or having having an article in plain language that you know that you manage to distribute uh, in trade uh, trade uh, journals and, and magazines, and and you know, uh, being able to bring together a good press release that gets the main messages or the key messages out into the community. So. You know, maybe we need a different way of evaluating the work. And uh, you know, what I find is that you have to do right now. We have, for for us as community-based researchers, we really have two standards. We have our standard of, in the community, are we accepted? Are we trusted? Are you know, our communities continuing to come to us with uh, questions and with issues that they want us to help them with? And that's one way of evaluating whether we're doing it. And then on the other hand, we're still, we're still expected to you know, publish and, and uh, present at academic conferences and on and on and on, right? So, yeah. I think uh, although everyone uh, is always reluctant to interrupt in the presentation, I think I'm, I'm going to do it now and take this moment just to thank Gail very much. Um, I, really appreciated your, your reflection. Um, I think we've got the basis for some great publications here, Gail, which is what we're 
really needing to get done, as you say. Um, and the other thing I wanted to just mention, because Gail reminded me that in, in this whole social economy initiative where our region was Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and Northern Ontario, we partnered with three different institutions in order to bring that research to life in each of those provinces. And our partner in Northern Ontario was Gail's uh, Community Economic and Social Development Unit. In uh, Saskatchewan, that partner was CUSER, and the work of Isabel and Louise in particular has been very much appreciated. And in Manitoba, our partner started as the Winnipeg Research, er, Winnipeg Inner City Research Alliance and ulti ultimately became the Institute for Urban Studies. And so those institutions, as research institutions, have been absolutely c central to the success of, of this work and in carrying out the community-based research. And the Center for the Study of Cooperatives is part of that partnership as well. And uh, I think that's, that's one of the things that really needs to be emphasized is there is partnerships across universities as well as with, univers as with communities in order to carry out this kind of, of work effectively. So thank you very much, Gail, for saying yes when I phoned you out of the blue and asked you to do this. And uh, thank you, everyone, for coming out today to listen to what Gail had to say. And we'll thank you again. Thank you.